Before we can jump into the code, uh, there are a few setup tasks we have to do um, in order to run our game. Uh, the first thing we have to do is we need to have a local web server running on our machine. Uh, the reason for this is it has to do with browser security. Um, so we can create an index HTML page and we can view it in our browser by using the file local path to view that file. However, once it comes time to load in external assets uh, using the file path, uh, the browser will block this for security reason. So in order to not be hindered by the browser security, uh, we need to be able to host our assets over HTTP, um, and that's where our web server will come in. Uh, so there are many options available to you. Some are OS specific. Um, other ones can be tied to the browser you're currently using. Uh, so on the Phaser 3 site, you'll see some examples like you can use WAMP or XAMPP, uh, Mongoose, you can use MAMP if you're on Mac OS. Uh, you can also use things like Grunt, uh, Python, HTTP server from Node.js. Uh, you can do PHP, built-in web server. So for this course, uh, we will be going another route and we'll be using a Chrome browser extension. Um, and I will be showing you how we can set that up to serve our web server. Uh, you are welcome to use another one. Uh, however, that is out of scope uh, for this course. Uh, so to get the Chrome extension, if you go ahead and do a search for web server for Chrome, you should see it as the first result. Uh, so it is a very simple Chrome extension where you just point it to a local folder where you want to host files, um, and then it will spin up your server for you. Uh, so to use it, we just need to click the Add to Chrome button, click Add App, and then you'll see on your Chrome apps, you'll have a new app added. Uh, so to use the Chrome extension, you just go ahead and click on the app. A new window will open. So you just need to click on Choose Folder to where you should serve your files from. And then what will happen is any assets in that folder will start being, will um, be made available. And if you click this link here, you'll see a list of the current assets in that directory. Uh, so currently this directory is empty, so that's why it's showing this. Uh, so the second tool you're going to need is an editor. Uh, so there are many editors out there, uh, each with their own pros and cons. Uh, just to list a few of them, there's Sublime Text, Atom, VS Code, Brackets, WebStorm. Uh, you could use Notepad, Notepad++. Uh, so for this course, I am going to show you. Um, so for this course, I will be using VS Code, um, and you're welcome to, and you are welcome to also use VS Code. However, if you have a personal preference, you are welcome to use any code editor uh, that you would like to use. Uh, so to get VS Code, if you come down here, you click on this link, and you should be taken to the VS Code version for the. OS you're currently on. Um, if you go ahead and click on the download for Mac button, this will download the installer. Um, then you just need to run the installer and follow the instructions. Finally, the last tool we need is we actually need the phaser library itself. Uh, so to get the library, if you click the download button up here on phaser, you'll be taken to this page. And then if you go ahead and click on this button over here, it'll take you to the stable releases. Uh, so at the time of, re of this recording, uh, Phaser 3.16.2 is the latest version. So there are a few different ways to get the Phaser library. Um, it's available on NPM, so you can install it from there. It's also hosted on the JS Deliver CDN, uh, so you can include the script tag on your web page if you would just like to use Phaser that way. You can also clone the GitHub repository if you'd like to go that route. You can download Phaser as a zip, and you can also get direct links to the JavaScript file and the Menify JavaScript file. Uh, so if you click the links, uh, those files will be downloaded for you uh, in your browser. 
So if you like to take a look at the source code while developing, I definitely recommend getting the phaser.js file uh, since it's the unmodified version and it'd be easier to read. Um, for production ready, um, I definitely do recommend that you use the phaser.min file uh, since it's already minified for you if you'll be including phaser that way in your project.